Welcome back, Golly Vibes family. Today's episode, I want to show a video clip of um, Kenneth Copeland talking about the verse, um, John 6, 54, where the Lord talks about drinking his blood, right? I, I, and I just want to show this video to give more context on what that verse actually means, because the way he put it was just very out of context, right? Check out the video. Some of you may have seen it already. Some of you may have not. But let's check it out because it popped up on my on my feet again. <clears throat> That's the cutting. <clears throat> and then I would do the same. First of all, where, where did they get this whole, I cut myself, you cut yourself, we drink it? Where, where did that come from? Now we've mixed our blood. That's right. I want you to be this way every time you take communion and you ought to take it a lot. A lot. Yes, mm -hmm. yes sir. Now his blood mm. is in my body. Yes, sir. It's in there. His blood is mixed with my Now, you kind of see what I'm talking about. I, I, listen, I'm not even going to say anything about Ken. I'm not even going to say much about Kenneth Copeland. Um, I've done different videos on Ken Ken in the past. It's neither here nor there. Let's, let's dive into the revelation of the actual scripture he's talking about. Um, that's being put way out of context. Um, the Lord's not talking about physically drinking real blood in John six fifty four when he says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. It's not real physical blood. We understand that the Lord spoke to us and speaks to us in parables. In parables, everything... That we're that that we're we're seeing as far as marriage, as far as having a child, as far as the trees growing, as far as seeds being planted, as far as fruits coming from the branches of trees, it's all parabolic for us to see in the natural to understand God in the spiritual. Hallelujah. Parable. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Everything we go through in life, everything that happens to us is meant for us to see God. And when it doesn't, it's outside of God's nature which makes it wrong, right? You step into a place of being outside of God's nature. You're out of order and you are in full confusion. Now, when you have somebody doing something like this, cutting, acting like they're cutting themselves, pouring it in a cup and drinking it, they are at a place of being in the wilderness, right? There's no rain. There's no revelation. We know that rain's it's symbolic for revelation. It's a parable for revelation because in Deuteronomy 32, 2, it says, let your teachings, let my teachings fall like the rain. So we know that the Lord's teachings fall like the rain. His revelation falls, falls like the rain. So the water is like revelation, right? It quenches you. So when you don't have that revelation or when you don't have rain, you are in a place of dry land. You just, there's no rain. So he's in the wilderness, you know. And I pray for him to come out of that place because being in that place, you can end up teaching people, not even end up. If you are a pastor and you're in that place, you shouldn't even be in the pulpit, to be honest with you. You have no foundation. You have no understanding on what it is to feed the Lord's sheep. You're cutting them off spiritually. There is a, a blockade that they cannot get over, right? They can't ascend if their own leader isn't even ascending. You get, you get what I'm saying? So John 6, 54, drink my blood and have eternal life. Let's, let's go even further, right, to the next verse, John 6, 58, 59. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even shall live by me. So the Lord's talking about eating him right now. Lord have mercy. I wouldn't even want to see the 
the acting out of what they have for that one. Okay, let's chop this finger off. Let's let's cut that toe. Let's put them both on a plate and have ourselves toey finger. I couldn't even imagine. Live by me. This is that bread which come down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Now the Lord, when he's talking about eating his flesh, when he's talking about drinking his blood, he's talking about eating the bread of life, as we just seen right there. Eat of me. The Lord is the bread of life that comes down from heaven. What is the bread of life also? The word. What is the word also? Jesus. What is Jesus also? The revelation. So if you're eating the bread of life, you're eating the flesh of Jesus. It's symbolic. If you're engrafting the word, you're engrafting God's DNA. What is the DNA symbolic of? The blood. What is the blood symbolic of? The new wine. The wine. You're drinking the wine. You're drinking the blood. You're drinking Jesus' blood. It's symbolic. The Lord is not talking about physically being a cannibal. If you don't understand symbolism, if you don't understand parables, you're not going to understand the word of God. God speaks to us in parables. The initiated understand the parables. The initiated, I'll say it again, the initiated understand the parables. If you don't even understand that and you take it in an offensive way or a carnal way, you don't understand the parables. Mysteries in the Greek is mysterion. It speaks of the initiated understanding. The godly only understanding and it being veiled to the wicked. That means that means God's mysteries can only be interpreted and understood by those who have the Holy Spirit. That's what that means. And those who are wicked don't have it. Only the godly can understand it. The godly are the initiated. The initiated are those who understand the mysteries. Those who understand the mysteries have the Holy Spirit. That's why. Listen, that's why I even like if I like, let's say I see something like on TikTok or something like that, which I don't really see much, you know, hallelujah, grace to the Lord. Like, but, but let's see, they try to say something I said and take it in a, a, a way where they're saying it's bad, right? I won't get upset with the person. I'll feel bad and I'll start to pray for them, Right. If, if somebody takes my words, because I have seen it like once or twice. If somebody takes my words and they try to twist it and make it like it's bad because they don't understand the spiritual aspect of it. I'll feel bad for them and I'll pray for them. Honest to God. Honest to God. Honest to God. When I have seen that, I've prayed for the people because I understand that they're not initiated. I understand they don't have the Holy Spirit. They have a spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit. You get what I'm saying? They have a spirit that's coming against the Holy Spirit. The Lord gave me revelation on that one time. He said, they're, cru they're, they're, they're crucifying me in you. When you are in a place of understanding God's spiritual kingdom, when, you understand, when you're in a place where you're understanding God spiritually, and you're, understand, you're in a place where you're understanding the spiritual aspect of the word of God, you, know, you understand the parables, and people, are coming, and people come against that, they're attacking Christ in you. They're not attacking you, which makes it dangerous. That's why I get into a place where I get emotional for them. I get into a place where I start to pray for them. Like, Lord, please allow them to understand your mysteries, your secrets. Allow them to understand. Hallelujah. Cease them with your Holy Spirit. May they truly be seeking you. Because those who are truly seeking God come into a place where they find God. Those who seek shall find. Amen. But you have to truly be, truly be seeking and not just want to do things out of being malicious or a different kind of way. Amen. So, you know, even with Kenneth, you know, I, I, I pray that the Lord brings him into revelation. May he truly be seeking God and not j be seeking money or seeking fame or seeking other things. May he truly be seeking God and step into the revelation where he begins to understand the way he's been, different ways he's been teaching. There's more depth to it. You can go way deeper. You're, you're at a carnal level. And the Lord wants you, wants, you to go, wants you to go deeper. He wants all of us to go deeper. Amen. I'm not in a place of being mad at Kenneth or hating Kenneth at all. You know, um, 
I just simply pray he goes deeper because you can spiritually kill the sh you can spiritually spiritually kill people the way he's teaching right here you know so let's just pray people go deeper you guys pray for the lord to rain on us hallelujah and pull us out of tombs because many are in it and many were in it i was in it <laughs> i was in it but the lord the lord brought me out hallelujah the Lord, when the Lord led me to an amazing man of God, Bishop Michael Petro, the Lord led me out of the wilderness and led me to a foundation of water. Hallelujah. And I'll forever be grateful for that. God is good for those who truly seek him. For those who truly seek him, he'll lead you to where you need to be. Hallelujah. And when that happens, you'll come into a full place of transformation. Continuously get fed, continuously drink, hallelujah, and truly be grateful. Amen. I love you guys. God bless. Let me just think in the comments. Amen. God bless. Shalom.